Hey guys, it's me bringing you my 2015 gaming setup. So this video is long, long overdue, but it's finally here. I'm nearing 200,000 followers on Twitch, so to celebrate, I thought I'd get off my lazy butt and finally film this video for you guys. One thing I will say before we get into it is I'm putting everything, including all the model numbers, um, everything that I mentioned, including where I got it from and everything in the description. So before commenting any questions, make sure you read the description. Um, so recently I've moved to, uh, moved cities to a place in Australia called Darwin and that happened about a month ago. So all of this is pretty, pretty new and I've still got to add some more things in, but this is the general gist of it. So the room that the setup is in is actually meant to be the house's main bedroom. Hence why I have a walking booth and ensuite off the room, but it's very handy. Okay, so let's get into it. As you can see, I have four monitors. I have three hooked up to my PC and one hooked up to my Xbox One. All the monitors are BenQ. They're my favorite brand of monitors and I just love the look of them. The first monitor I use here is for like reading tweets when I'm streaming, other things I might wanna do. It's the RL2455HM. I probably wouldn't recommend this one for gaming, but it's one of the cheaper ones, but does a job for a PC monitor. The second one here is the XL2420T, which I bought back in August 2012 when they were first released. I've used this one as my main Xbox monitor up until about um, a couple of months ago till I got the updated 2014 version of the same monitor, which is the XL2420Z, which I now play console on. One thing to remember if you're thinking about getting a gaming monitor is the size of the monitor and the response time. 24 inches really is the optimal size to play games on and you want the lowest possible response time such as one or two milliseconds and that will really give you the best gaming experience. The last monitor here is a 27 inch BenQ and I bought it a bit bigger so that I could do photo and video editing on it. It's the EW2730V and I really like the look of it and I can fit lots on it. And then up the top of this monitor is where I put my webcam. This is the new Logitech C930E, which was released a couple of months ago. They haven't brought one out in a couple of years, so I really felt the urge to get it. Next is the keyboard. It's the Corsair K95 RGB mechanical keyboard. I recently got this for my birthday and I love it because you can customize the backlighting to any color, not to mention all of its added features. I've always really liked the feeling of mechanical keyboards and I find them really nice to play PC games on. I probably wouldn't recommend them if you have to worry about being quiet late at night as they probably aren't the most quiet keyboards to type on. Next is the microphone. It's the Blue Yeti and I've had this for over two years. It's just the standard one that I think they first brought out and yeah, it does the job. Next is my mouse. It's the SteelSeries Sensei. Once again, I love it because you can customize the color. It's also a really nice mouse if you're thinking about picking one up. SteelSeries is probably one of my favorites. I also have their rival mouse, which I take with me traveling um, to play games on my laptop with. Um, the mouse pad I actually got from Target in Australia for $3. I just thought it was a bit cute. Uh, next is my Scuf gaming controller. It's the Scuf One Pinky, hence the pink. I got this in the very first batch of Scuf Ones that were released in February 2014 last year and I'm still going strong with it, minus the right analog stick there. The speakers I use are the Logitech Z4i. And my parents bought me these uh, back when I was probably 13 or 14 years old. So they are pretty old, but they're still going strong and I really like the look of them. Um, when I'm live streaming, I play all my stream music through these as opposed to playing them through my headset. I turn the volume up or down when I need to so that I don't have to have it blaring in my head because that gives me a bit of a headache and that's not good when you're streaming for long amounts of time. Next is my custom built PC. I'm not going to go into everything about it, but it was basically built as a streaming streaming PC. And I'll put all the specs in the description if you're really interested. Next is my collection of Astro gaming headsets. The stand they're on is actually a necklace stand, but I figured I wear more headsets than I ever do necklaces. So I thought I'd put it to better use. The first one here is my favorite. I'm sure you could probably figure out why, but these are the Astro A40s, which means they are a wired headset. They're from Astro's Neon Edition, which also came out in red, orange, and yellow. Astro have actually recently released a new generation of headsets to suit the next gen consoles. So all of these are all the older generation. This one here is the Astro A50s, which are a wireless headset. I always get asked which are the better headsets out of the two, and the answer really does depend on you and how you play. The sound quality, in my opinion, is exactly the same between the two. It's just whether you want that added convenience of having no cord, allowing you to walk around with it on your head. 
but obviously one drawback of that is charging the headset. I bought these back in 2012 from EB Games and have used them religiously for about two years. And the problem I found I was always having was with the charging cord and the charging battery life. The charge cord that comes with the headset isn't very long, so if you have a pretty big setup or big desk and you sit pretty far away from your console, you can't sit there and play with it charging because it simply doesn't reach. Also when I play I find myself playing for at least six or seven hours or something like that and charging always seems to run out while I was playing so I was sometimes stuck without a headset while I was playing because it was charging so to answer the question if you're more of a casual gamer or if you have kids and need to run around with a headset and don't have to worry about the cord and being tied down to the console then the A50s might be the better choice but if you're more like me and you like playing games for a long amount of time and you're not too bothered about having to take your headset off when you get up then the A40s would probably be better and this last one here is the original black version of the A40s, so that's a wired headset. I actually won these at EB Expo 2013 for winning a free-for-all tournament, so I'm kind of proud of them. <laughs> Back here is my Xbox One. I don't have the Kinect plugged in because that has always caused me a lot of problems whilst talking when I live stream, so I've got that out. Um, I got this on the very first day it was released. I have that uh, day one controller that came with it, but it's somewhere else, but I normally use my stuff, so I don't use that. And then here I've got all of my Xbox One games. I sold most of my 360 ones, minus my lovely Black Ops 1 and 2, my favorites. Um, here are some things that I got from reps here in Oz. The Destiny one is actually pretty sweet. It's got all the, the guns and like, yeah, it's like really well put together and it's got all these postcards. So yeah, I reckon this is pretty cool. And then, um, I've got the Advanced Warfare book, but it's basically just a notepad. Um, oh, and the, the stand that it's on is from Typo. I got it a long time ago, but I don't think I can buy it anymore, but I still like it. And next here, I've got my second webcam. I use this as a setup camera on my stream so that people can see what I'm playing and what I'm doing, and people find that quite interesting, so I have it on there. Um, I have it connected to a USB port, which then connects to my PC as the cord wouldn't be long enough to reach. So yeah, that's really cool if you want to add extra things in. Then here is the green screen. I originally bought this when I had a super tiny room and this was all that could fit, but now I definitely need a bigger one. I've ordered a three meter one, which is coming in the mail. But if you're thinking about getting a green screen, make sure you get a three meter one, regardless of how big your room is, as it's just a lot less mucking around. Also, if you don't know what the purpose of this is, it's a backdrop for behind my front camera so that when I'm live streaming or making a video, I can use a chroma key feature to block out everything that's green. So it will basically just look like it's just me in the picture. It really is a nice touch to a live stream in my opinion because it kind of looks like you're in the game and it takes up a lot less space than a full webcam. The poles are adjustable. And I actually bought this as a set off eBay with um, this big light that I use. The set came with two smaller uh, lights as well, but they didn't fit on the truck when I moved up to Darwin, so they're still in Adelaide at the moment. But this one does the job on its own pretty well, and I'll just turn this on before I start streaming, which is pretty easy. A lot of people might not think this is probably necessary, but if you're going to use a green screen, you must have adequate lighting, otherwise the green screen will come up all pixelated and it won't be a nice crisp outline of your face or body. So I really would recommend getting one of these. The brand, I think, is uh, Cowboy Studios. I think you can buy lots of different sets off eBay, but I will link the one I have in the description. And the rug on the floor here is actually two rugs put together. They were like $60 from Ikea. I would recommend probably getting a rug or some sort of protectant on the floor for your setup, just so you don't have to worry about marks or stains on the floor. I learned that the hard way when I spilled soft drink on my carpet in my old house. <laughs> um, plus the rug makes it look pretty cool. So yeah, moving on and here is the ensuite. Nothing much in there apart from me. And here I've got the walk-in robe, which I obviously use to store clothes. <laughs> I'll show you a couple of things in here, which are pretty cool. I got given this Advanced Warfare Sentinel hoodie from the Call of Duty reps here in Australia, which I absolutely adore because it's got my gamer tag on it. So that's pretty cool. And I've got this Astro hoodie as well, which I got given and I really like it. And then up here, I've got some of the hats from my own apparel line, which launched a couple of months ago. So I'm using those as giveaways. And I've got some of my favorite gaming shirts, the Advanced Warfare shirts, and then um, some shirts from when I worked for Astro and some others there. And then um, I, bet, I guess that's basically it. I've tried to include as much as I can with some advice, but 
If you've got any other questions after reading the description, you can send me a tweet by Twitter. My Twitter's on the screen right there and I'll try to answer it. Um, I don't really, like I read YouTube comments, but I'm not on it a lot. So Twitter might be the best way to reach me. But um, thanks again for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.